Ashes on Truth FM. And I am joined by the beautiful, the one and only Pastor Shayna James from Rohe Christian Church out of San Jose, California. Like everything was gone. And I remember being in that cemetery and I looked around and I and I thought about this quote from Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe said, you know, um, the wealthiest place in all of the earth is not diamond mines, it's not oil fields, it's not gold mines, it's not banks. The wealthiest place in all the world is the is the cemetery because there you'll find hopes that have died, dreams that have died, books that were never written, songs that were never sung. And it, it hit me. And it's, you know, the Lord just kind of reminded me, he was like, Shana, your dreams didn't die with Jeff. And I was like, what? He's like, you're still alive. Because a part of us, when our loved, especially our spouse dies, a part of us dies. And we have to almost figure out how to relive and do everything all over again and how to redream. I, I had to dream again. And um, I remember just saying to myself, you know what? All my hopes and dreams didn't die with Jeff. You know, I'm still here. And I remember that the Lord, you know, the Lord had called me to pastor the church. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take this church and I'm going to serve God and I'm going to keep serving God. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to preach his word. I'm going to teach. I'm going to do everything God tells me to do because, you know, my, my husband used to say, he said, you know, the most important date thing on your tombstone is not the day you were born or the day you die is what you do with your dash in the middle. And I realized the day that I died hadn't been written. It wasn't here yet. And I still had a dash to work on. And so that moment being at that that, that cemetery six months later was like a, a reinfusement uh, uh, for my hopes and my dreams that I needed so desperately. Wow. Yeah, I, the biggest mistake I made, and I didn't know I was making it, uh, came when a friend who is a fellow, he's a widower, okay. told me this story. And, well, it wasn't a story, but he told me this analogy. He says, hey, Shana, have you ever been skiing? I said, yeah, I've been skiing. And he says, when you ski and you go down the hill, he said, do you lean back? I said, no, because if you lean back, then I'm going to fall. He said, right. what do you do? I said, I lean into it. He said, so when you go through something that's difficult, like the hill, your job is not to pull away from the pain. Your job is to lean into the pain. He says, and if you'll lean into it, he said, it's not going to hurt any less, but you're just going to get through it better and faster. And so my biggest mistake was that I was leaning away from the pain. I was running from it. I was soothing it with work and focusing on the kids and just trying to get stuff done and keeping myself busy and instead of allowing myself to grieve. And the reason I say it was my biggest mistake was because it's going to hit you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And when it hit me because I hadn't leaned into it, it hit me hard. Mm. And it immobilized me to the point where I was sitting in a car, getting ready to go work out with a trainer and I couldn't get out the car. I was in tears. Mm. I, I didn't know what to do. And I learned that I needed to take time mm -hmm. to allow myself to be sad. I needed to take time to allow myself to cry. I needed to take time to allow myself to feel the hurt of losing someone close to me because everything that I had done up until that point was just keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. So that was my biggest mistake. And the other mistake that I made is akin to that. So I, I say you got to lean in, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I didn't do um, that I needed to do was I needed to plug in. And, and what do I mean by that is, you know, all of us have a cell phone. Everybody got a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And you can hang out and use that cell phone all you want to. But when that little battery light starts to go down, <laughs> at some point, you can't keep using that phone no more because right. all the power is out. And what I learned was that I needed to recharge myself just like I needed to recharge my phone. I needed, sorry, I needed a regular time to recharge myself. I need a regular time to plug in. I plug my phone in every night before I go to bed. I needed something that was energizing me, something that was filling me, something that was was um, nurturing me. And, and that can be spending time with the Lord. 
I'm going to tell you, spending time with the Lord was the best solution. But for all of us extra holy people, we still need (laughs) something else. We needed something that is joyful for us, something that fills our heart and our soul. And, you know, whether it's reading or for me, what I I got to do because I love California was every time I went to the beach, it refreshed me, it recharged me. And so I had to make regular appointments with myself to go to the beach because I Mm. needed to be recharged. Um, Even, 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 you know, uh, God told people on the seventh day they needed to rest. Um, we need call to the, rest and call plug the Sabbath. In. It's called a Sabbath. <laughs> call and Sabbath. Widow, widows need a Sabbath. We need a Sabbath to, to grieve. We need a Sabbath to plug in. We need a Sabbath to connect with God. We need that time. And we have to be careful that we don't stop doing that. So I would say lean in, plug in. And then the last thing that I, I did not do well, um, but that I wanted to do better was trust in. I, I, I should have trusted in God more. Um, I, I was a pastor. I was walking by faith. But there were so many things. How do I know I wasn't trusting in God? Let me tell you how I know I wasn't trusting in God. Because I kept trying to figure everything out on my own. Oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> oh, God. There it is. <laughs> I mean, I wish what I wish I would have done is I wish I would have hit that Matthew 633, you know, that where I was just like, you know, seek first the kingdom. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. But I was up late at night Googling. I was up trying to figure. I was up calling. I was up texting, trying. I don't know if I was texting back then because I don't know if he had text. But I was up just trying to figure out a way out of what I was in every single day and i realized something that faith rests faith faith in other words oh that's so good Uh. (laughs) in in other (laughs) words when when you have faith and you trust in god you can go to bed and i go to sleep because i'm resting knowing that it's on him but i know i'm not trusting in god when I'm sitting there and I'm at night just going, God, I just got to figure this out. Now, I'm not talking about not praying. I was praying, but I would get up off my knees and still go to figure it. And uh. so I had to stop. And <laughs> so the three things that I did wrong that I want to encourage everybody to do is lean in, lean into the grief, uh, plug in, find something to recharge you, and then finally trust in, trust in God and rest. Those were my three biggest mistakes. So awesome. Thank so tell, you. Us, tell us about your new husband and how you got there. Well, um, I'm going to take you on the little journey to get to this because, girl, it was a journey. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when my husband, when my late husband, Jeff Hurd, died, my my the first thing I said to myself, I was 34 years old. I was still young. And I said, I will never marry again. Mm. And... Um, I had no idea how powerful the words that we speak out of our mouth are. And it was, it, it's been 12 years since my late husband passed away. So I've been walking as a widow and a single mother for 12 years. Well, just about two years ago, um, a little over two years ago, I was on my way to a conference in LA, a pastor's conference, and I'm on the plane spending time with the Lord, enjoying my time with the Lord. And the Lord said, it's not good for man to be alone. Oh. I was like, I know that. You know, <laughs> are you telling me that? Okay. <laughs> you know, and God was like, girl, I'm talking about you. And I was like, mm, I'm good, God. Oh. I had, are you I, look, I, no, I, I felt like so good because I had learned how to be content in my singleness I, I enjoyed being single. Um, I enjoyed some of the things about being a widow that are not fun, but I learned to enjoy was vacationing and choosing where I go on vacation, not worrying about where my husband wanted to go. I went where I wanted to go. Um, <laughs> and my kids just had to go where I was going because I was paying. So That's right. I, I was like, this was great. Um, there was a lot that was hard about being single, but that was one of the few highlights of it. And. <laughs> I had, you know, my kids were, I was, I was uh, at the time about two years away from my son graduating and then thinking about four years, four to five years away from being on my own in my house by myself. And I was getting ready for that. I was like, come on, girl, you ain't been lived on your own for a while. You always had these two people attached to you at least. Well, God said, I'm talking about you. It's not good to be alone. And I said, but God, I want to serve you. I want to give you everything. And you know what God told me? He said, well, one can chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000. And I was like, so you trying to tell me I can do more with somebody else? 
And he was like, yes, I'm trying to tell you that. And I was like, whatever, God, we ain't talking. I get to the prayer meeting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to disregard. Like, you ain't saying that to me. I get to the prayer meeting. And I kid you not, um, we're like worshiping. And, and someone stops worshiping the prayer meeting and says they have a prophetic word. And I was like, okay, let's hear it. And they started speaking about their curses and things that you've said over yourself that God wants to destroy. There are promises that God has made to you that God wants to bring back. And I just kept saying, oh, God, you giving a word to somebody. And God was like, girl, it's for you. And I was like, what? And immediately, immediately in that moment, it came back. You cursed yourself. And oh, the Lord and, she, and this lady said, there's things that you've written in a journal that God says, I'm going to call those back, that, that they're about to resurrect and that I'm going to move in those things. And within a year, you're going to see God move. And I was like, what? And I was like, let me go. I knew the, I have journaled for 25 years, uh, literally four to five and times you knew the ex And you knew the exact Oh my God. I knew the exact <laughs> journal, the exact page to turn to. There were five oh. promises that God had given me a year after my husband had passed. And all four of them God had been working on or had come to pass, except for one, that God was going to give me a husband. And God had that description down deep. He was going to love God with all of his heart. He was going to love me and my children uh, like I, we were his own. He was going to be tall and handsome and he was going to be wealthy. And I was like, wealthy? And God said, no, no, he's going to be able to take care of himself and he's going to be able to take care of other people. Don't be thinking about like he's a millionaire. I was like, oh, okay, God, well, I don't like the millionaire. <laughs> and, and I, I broke uh, I broke, I broke those curses with my words by, by canceling out and saying, you know, I cancel those words that I spoke over myself because what God said to me was, he said, I was able to work in the other four areas because you agreed with me and you allowed wow. me to work. He said, but I couldn't work. Watch this. God said, I can't work in a place where you've cursed. Oh gosh. And I can't move where your mouth won't let me move. So I had to break those agreements. I had to say, I had to renounce those words. And God said, now you're ready. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, girl, I went on this new app I had never heard of. It was called Zeus. I was like, who the heck is a Zeus? What is that? Not Christian, that, mingle, not, like, not all these other. You know, I was like, Greek God, that's awesome. Right. Some, I was like, God, you took me to the Zeus app. I'm crazy. So I go on and literally like two days on the app, I see this guy. I'm like, oh, he's attractive. Right. And it was something about what he said, the way he worded it, that made me say, he said he was looking for a woman of integrity. I said, oh, he's a believer, I bet. Because it's kind of hard to figure out if they're believers. And uh, he called me. We chatted a little bit. We decided to meet for coffee. I am not a person who likes to be touched. And he reached out at that first coffee and uh, uh, date, and he grabbed my hand, and I felt comfortable. Oh, and wow. and three days later, I, I you know I had been praying. Now I didn't realize it was three days later until about seven months later when I looked in my journal. But in my journal, three days later, I had been praying, and God told me that was my husband. And so, uh, and and by the way, I'm dying. Based on the promise, based on the promise, my husband is 6'5". Yes, hey, hey, hallelujah. He is fine. Hey, hey, hallelujah. He loved Jesus and is a prayer where we come on somebody. And uh, he has got a job, a career where he is prepared for his future, takes care of himself and his children. He is a single father of two. He's got four. The two are grown, but the other two are um, boys that are just two years older than both of my boys. He's been caring for them for the last nine years. And I was like, come on, God, you sent me somebody who knows what it's like to be a single mom, who's a mom of two boys, I was like, uh, who's a parent of two boys. I mean, God couldn't put together. He has no desire to be in ministry loves the fact that I'm a pastor and supports me like never before. So I'm going to tell you something. God, look, I oh. love my late husband. I love my late husband. And I had a beautiful marriage with my late husband. Yes, this is a completely, completely different relationship. But I'm going to tell you something. It's sweet, girl. It's sweet. And I oh never would have thought. Never <laughs> would have thought. First of all, I am just cracking up because first of all, I love your honesty. This is why you, you know, being at Rohi Temple was so amazing for us because you guys just keep it real. I mean, and that, that is, you know, that's what we need to do. But I, I love this testimony.